A rectangular box has one corner at the origin, opposite corner on the plane, x plus y plus 2z equals 1. Find the dimensions that maximize the volume of the box. First approach, Lagrange multipliers. The formulation of Lagrange multipliers will depend on the book that you're using. So here's my approach. First, I look for the function that goes with the quantity that we're trying to maximize or minimize. So here, draw a picture. We have a rectangular box. Okay, we'll call dimensions x, y, and z as usual. So we want to maximize volume, which is given by the function f equal to x times y times z. Next, I'm looking for a constraint equation. This is going to be some equation which gives us a relation between the x, y, and z that we care about. So in this case, we're going to force x, y, and z to give us a point on the plane x plus y plus 2z equals 1. And for the constraint equation, we want to set it up so that the equation of the plane is set equal to 0. So our constraint is going to be g equal to x plus y plus 2z minus 1. Now, I form function capital F, which is just little f plus lambda times g. Lambda is going to be our Lagrange multiplier. We're going to take the partials of this with respect to x, y, and z, set them equal to 0, and then solve them simultaneously. When we take the partials, what happens? So, for instance, if I take partial with respect to x, x is our variable, y and z are treated as constants, we're going to get y times z plus lambda. So in the constraint, the only thing that's going to survive is take x and then take its partial with respect to x. And that's going to give us a 1. Similarly, we'll get equations for the partial with respect to y, partial with respect to z, set them all equal to 0. Next step, we want to get lambda out of our equations. So we can move the lambdas to the other side and then just see how things match up. So that'll give us the equations yz equals xz, 2xz equals xy, and 2yz equals xy. Now, first thing you might want to do is divide through by x, y, and z, but you need to be careful. If you do that, you're going to throw away the solutions where x, y, or z are equal to 0. But if you go back and look at the original problem, we're trying to get a volume, and we want to maximize it. If I let any of those quantities be equal to zero, the volume zero, and we know that we're probably going to have something that's bigger than zero. So we might as well assume x, y, and z are non-zero. Now you can divide. Once you do that, you'll wind up with y equals x equals 2z. Now, we can substitute into our constraint. So I'll take x and y, put in 2z, and see what comes out. So we have 2z plus 2z plus 2z equals 1, or z equals 1 sixth. I can go for x next, so y is equal to x, so I have x plus x plus 2 times 1 sixth is equal to 1, or 2x equals 2 thirds, x is equal to 1 third. Also, y is equal to 1 third because y equals x, so I get my point 1 third, 1 third, 1 sixth, and the volume is going to be maximized at 154th. Lagrange multipliers are probably too fancy for this problem. We could solve it just by going to two variables. So if you note, I take the equation of the plane, I solve for z, and then for our volume function, I could just write xy times something in terms of x and y, get it all down to two variables. Now the problem is just looking for a critical point for a function of two variables. To do that, I just take derivative with respect to x, derivative with respect to y, set what comes out equal to 0, and then see if I can get a solution. So in this case, what do we wind up with? Well, we expand all this out, take our partials, set them equal to 0. What do you note? Here, I can divide by y. Again, from before, we can assume y is not going to be 0 because we're expecting a volume to come out. And I can divide by x here. So it'll give me these two equations, okay, in two unknowns. So I could just do substitute and eliminate. So when I do that, what happens? So say we let y be equal to 1 minus 2x. I put it into the other equation, 
And then when you follow your nose, you get x equal to 1 third. When you sub the 1 third back into here, we get y equal to 1 third. So I have x and y, and I can also put these into the function, and I'll see that the volume is going to come out as 1 over 54, which agrees with the method from Lagrange multipliers.